The first Northern Arts Festival was originally held in 1989. The first festival of its kind, it is a stimulating presentation of exhibition, workshops, and demonstrations. The festival is open to mature, emerging, and student artists, and they come from all across Northern Canada. For participating artists, the festival is a place to learn. There is a lot of exchange of expertise and information, as well, the festival presents seminars to assist Northerners in managing their careers. Sue Rose is the executive director of the festival. Five years ago, how did the Great Northern Arts Festival really begin? Well, at the time I was working at a local gallery and I was uh, very good friends with a local artist by the name of Susan Rose. And I had a show for three women in Holman. And um, after I had had the show, I realized that these were three artists who were quite well known, and they had never exhibited. They had never been to their own exhibit. Um, they had exhibited their work in many places across Canada, but never had been able to attend their own exhibitions. And Sue Rose um, has spent a lot, a lot of time in the North, and she um, was quite aware of the problem, the isolation problem. You know, artists in the North hardly ever get to to um, attend their own exhibits and um, get out of their communities and take part in in arts events. Um, so that's how it started. We decided to have a fest. We decided to have a small show in it and we went to the government to see about funding and they said, well, if you make it a territorial event, we can give you uh, more money. <laughs> so that's how it became a festival. The event is really two festivals combined. One created with the needs of participating artists in mind and another to delight the visiting public. Right from the very beginning, the response was great. It was like, wow, it's about time somebody did this. So it's, it's been uh, great right since, since the beginning. And it's just gotten better. The Northern Arts Festival's aim is to foster the education and training of Northern artists in all facets of the creation and business of the arts. Um, we had funding just from the Department of Economic Development and Tourism. And then as the years have gone by, we've approached various other agencies and corporations, and we've done fundraising. So about, I'd say, one-third of our budget is government funding, one-third is corporate uh, sponsors, and the other third is fundraising. How do some of the sponsors feel, or how do they feel about supporting an event such as this? Um, very proud, <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's, uh, the event has, has become very well known, not only in the Northwest Territories, but all across Canada and in, in, you know, in other countries. Um, our image is, is quite strong considering we're only five years young. So most of our sponsors are very proud to be involved in the festival. Not most, all of our sponsors are very proud to be involved. Besides yourself, who was really involved such as um, volunteers and lots of volunteers. Um, I'm I'm working full time on the festival, and I also have part time staff during the festival. Um, but we rely heavily on volunteers. We usually have about 25 to 30 volunteers that help us each summer. And we uh, I also have a board of directors um, who help me quite a bit. How do the volunteers feel about? Oh, they they get very excited about meeting the artists and watching them at work. They become good friends with a lot of the artists, so it's, uh, it's a really good time for most volunteers. People can expect a truly exhilarating show of original paintings, prints, drawings, and carvings in all media. As well, a special exhibit highlights one of the many fine crafts produced in the North, such as jewelry and dolls. Um, we had anticipated that our sales would increase and they didn't. They stayed about the same. Um, we had a lot of media exposure, which was very good for us. Um, we had a lot of people go through. So from that we get word of mouth. Um, so I mean the sales aren't the most important part of it anyway. It's just it's an, a bonus, the sales. 
Visitor attendance and sales of artworks and carvings have increased significantly from the premiere in 1989. The 1992 guest book shows that visitors to the event came from 27 countries. Attendance rose from an estimated 2,000 in 1989 to over 6,000 in 1992. Um, the visitations probably went up by about 30, 30 to 40 percent. We were very busy during the festival, just wall-to-wall -wall people the whole time. It was very exciting. How did you enjoy it? How you been? Good, good. Yeah, good. Is well, William and them in town? Uh, most of the artists are from the NWT, and we bring um, artists from every single region of the NWT, approximately six to ten artists from each region, and we try to to attain a balance between new and mature artists and also the different mediums. And we also had artists this year from the Yukon Territory, Alaska, Greenland, um, and a few from other, oh, Labrador. It was the first time we've had Lab Inuit Labrador artists participate. So that was really exciting and they plan on coming back next year. Do you find a difference between artists that came five years ago to maybe how they're doing now? Oh yeah, there's been a real improvement in the artists that come back every year. Um, for example, your brother Francis, um, his work has improved, as you've probably noticed so much, be because he now has a place to exhibit his work. Before the festival, he was, um, he never had, had the experience of exhibiting his work and having people um, uh, praise his work and selling his work. So now he has something to work towards each summer, and he's working hard, and, and he's also seeing other people's work, which is giving him new ideas for his own work. Um, so I've seen a big improvement in his work. He started off with small pieces, and now he's, he's gone to much bigger pieces and using different mediums. Although many events were happening at the same time, a lot of people still showed up to watch artists demonstrate their work. Well, this year, for the, for the Carvers, for example, we had a big tent outside of the festival site. We changed locations this year for the festival, and we had the use of the grounds outside of the hall, so that it was great for the Carvers. They got to work all together outside. Um, they didn't have to worry about the dust. Um, as far as the graphic artists, we have long tables set up, so they work all together on, uh, inside of the hall, and they have an opportunity to walk around and look at each other's work so it works really well. They really enjoy the, the studio setup. There are quite a few um, women carvers in the north, people. I guess when you see advertisements and shows on carvers, they're always, um, they're, they always have men carvers, but there are quite a few uh, women carvers. We have quite a few apply each year. What kind of response was received by yourself and your volunteers, even from the artists, just about the festival and the organization, the whole um, most festival. Everybody says I'm coming back next year, <laughs> which is, um, it's, it's great. Um, they just, didn't, everybody enjoys it. It's a real northern, um, it's a real northern event. I know when the artists um, are planning on coming, they're, they're usually quite nervous and uh, intimidated because they think it's going to be an ex, you know, an exhibition, um, a for, more of a formal event, and they and they get to the festival and there's, it's it's very northern, so they have a they they learn a lot from each other. They're around their own people and they have a very good time, so they always want to come back. Daniel Kitsualik is from Joe Haven and was here at the festival helping out artists from his region. And what happened was my artists, I have three of them here at the show, and they wanted me to come up to help them do all the necessary work that needs to be done for, uh, so they could concentrate on their work and to give me some experience. What I mean by concentrate on their work is so they, ha they don't have to worry about interpreter or any paperwork that needs to be done, um, and to make the show run smoother. If they have questions, they could ask me, and I would talk to whoever's in charge, and I would take care of it for them. Any questions, any tools they need, I just go and get it for them, as well as interpret for other people here, because they're kind of short-staffed. How many artists came from uh, Joe Haven, and are they mostly in soapstone carving? Okay, we got three artists who came from Joe Haven. 
One is a master carver, named Joais Pukenlik, and the other one is Lorraine Pukenlik, that's his wife, and she's a jewel maker. She just finished this, an eight-week jewelry course in Joe Haven. And the third one is um, sort of along the line of printing, drawing, painting, along that line. And he's, he's Leo Uttak. How are the artists finding this place and the yeah. people, the environment, and all the things that's going on? Well, except for that one day of sort of cold weather, they loved it. They just loved it. Was it worthwhile for some artists to keep coming back again? I mean, not only for the money, but for exhibition of their art? Yeah. Um, I, I'm just remembering a few comments from some, some of the artists. They said, they said it's what carries them through the year. It's their inspiration. Um, also, the little bit of the peer pressure too. Um, they see the same artists each year, and they want they want those artists to see the improvement in their work. So, um, so not only is it you know inspirational for them, it's also gives them the drive. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of hard work, and there's a very short time where it's a lot of fun. And in that short time, it's um, I just feel so proud and of what I'm doing that it sort of carries me through the rest of the year. take a group shot every year and I mean I remember every single one of their names and there's hundreds of them um, you know I remember their personalities just dealing with the artists I really enjoy that part of it. Will the art festival keep happening every year? I mean we hope so yeah um, things get better every year um, funding gets easier because we have a reputation you know a good reputation um, our board has, is getting stronger each year. It's been a learning experience. We all went to, into this without any um, event management experience. So we're learning as we go along, and things are getting easier. So. When you're done the festival for, like last summer, when you finished, when do you start to really reorganize again for, for the next uh, year? Right away. Um, Wrap-up takes usually about six weeks and then I used to take a holiday and then as soon as I get back November I should be actually I should be in full swing for the next festival by October so three months after the festival closes how much preparation goes into that I mean, just hours well I work all year on it um, and I usually put about 2,000 2,000 hours a year and I have a part-time assistant who will work for three to four months, and then um, short-term staff during the festival. So every year we, we need more staff because we do more, and we want to improve things every year. So we, um, 
we need more people. Is this a good experience for you? Would yeah, you it's, it's taught me a lot. It's teaching me a lot. And I like everything. Like, we got ICC here too, so it's perfect. They got all kinds of things going on. And after work, the work's kind of hectic, but when you more or less get over the hump, you can relax and go to the functions, enjoy yourself. Experience of a lifetime. Are you meeting some more friends and seeing some um, people that you haven't seen in a few years? Artists? Yes. Uh, not only artists, um, politicians. Like, and the one that stands out in my mind is those two people from Greenland who took the dog team from Greenland to Point, what, what was it, Point Barrow, Alaska? And I met them again because they sat, stayed at my father's house in Joe Haven. Got to meet them and their, their family, as well as other artists and just people. You get lots of friends now. How were the other artists finding it here? The other artists from the other communities, um, the ones that don't have representation, like who can't speak English, are finding it kind of difficult. But since I've been interpreting for some of them, they seem to find it easier now. And they, they're sort of thinking about returning and hoping that there will be more interpreters here next year. The Great Northern Arts Festival has become very well known in the past few years, as word of mouth keeps spreading across Canada and even in faraway places. Um, well, I get inquiries from all over the world now, and a lot of that is word of, word of mouth. For example, this year we um, had people from 27 different countries. Um, we keep track of this in our guest book. Um, so, you know, these, these 50 people go back and tell their friends, and so next year it'll, you know, it'll probably double. Uh, word of mouth is, of course, the best kind of advertising that there is. Um, so it's becoming very popular all over the world. Is there anything you're doing differently that you might have thought of over the summer and say, I'm going to do something different next year? Um, well, the festival coming up is our fifth anniversary. Um, so right now we're trying to think of special, special things to do for our fifth anniversary. Um, and one of the things that we're going to try and do is to get in some, to commission some established artists to work on very large pieces of art um, for the new visitor center in the new Vic. So that's, that'll be really exciting. Uh, we're also trying to get the whole town involved in the fifth anniversary. So, sorry, I can't give you any more information. <laughs> it's as much as we have planned. What is the future of um, Northern artists and art up here in the North? I mean, you might... Well, I think, um, I think um, Inuit art is going through a change, um, and more contemporary ideas are coming into their work, into the work. Um, um, I, I think artists are starting to realize that they can um, start use their imagination a little bit more instead of carving like you know the polar bear and the walrus and you know the standard things. They're starting to to carve more from you know from their memory and from their heart and things that are happening today. So I think you'll start to see more contemporary work. How do you like the artwork? I mean, they're, they're so varied and there's so many good artists here. I mean, is there anyone that stands out in your mind that like mm. you won't forget it? Oh, that's a really tough one. They, there's so many different fields to choose from, so many good pieces. Hmm, that, that's a hard one. <laughs> I don't think I could un say which is a favorite, but I say, I'll say I really like Almost all of them. There's a few pieces that probably need a bit more work, but overall everything seems to be very well done here. I guess I prefer art that's a little bit more mysterious, something that you have to look at a little longer, um, uh, something that's not so realistic. But I guess most people who are involved in art in a long time tend to move away from realism and, and um, like abstract art a little bit more. I, I, something that's not, um, doesn't sort of jump out and say, I am a polar bear. <laughs> um, it could be a polar bear, but something a little bit more abstract or uh, more abstract.
master. <laughs> Although the arts festival is a success in its own way, it still costs a lot of money to organize and plan. But in the end, it is very much worthwhile. Yeah, it is worthwhile. Uh, it's giving the artists something that they really need. Um, and it's also uh, giving the community something. It's giving the people something. It's giving the tourist industry something. It's giving the businesses something. Uh, the spin-offs from the event are incredible. And most importantly, it's giving, it's giving artists um, in the North, uh, an opportunity to exhibit their work and to see other artists at work, which most of them have very little opportunity to see outside of their own communities. About 50 artists are sponsored and enter into this one-of-a-kind festival. And they come from all across Canada, from BC in the south to Baffin Island in the eastern Arctic. We bring in approximately, uh, we sponsor approximately 50 artists, and there's usually about 70 to 80 artists at the festival. Do they have another arts festival like this anywhere in the north? or? Um, not quite like this. There, there is now a festival in Yellowknife that started last year. Um, it's, it's, the format is quite a bit different than, than our arts festival. Um, I haven't been to one similar to ours. Most, art, most festivals are you buy a booth and set up your own little corner of the, at, at the hall or the event. And, and with our festival, everybody sort of, it's more like an exhibit and a festival all in one. Preparations are well on its way for the fifth anniversary festival for 1993. And it promises to be another attractive event. Oh, well, right now I'm, uh, all the registration forms have gone out so that um, as soon as they come back, I spend a lot of time on the phone. Um, I'm full force into um, applying for funding uh, and for corporate sponsorship uh, and promotion. I'm doing a lot of work on promotion right now. But the festival is open to both new and mature artists, um, student artists. Um, I wouldn't want people to be intimidated and think it's only for you know, the well-known artists. It's for every artist in the NWT. Um, I think I would like, I'm sort of thinking that this summer will be the most successful in terms of the learning experience for artists. I think what we've learned over the past four years in terms of what works best for workshops and seminars, I think that this coming summer um, um, will be the the best in terms of the learning experience for the artists. Um, the exhibition is always is always great. Um, when you bring in 70 artists, you know, all at the same time, you're bound to have a great exhibition. So I don't worry too much about the exhibition, um, but I want the learning experience to be, you know, the best that it can be. So each year we really we change the format a little bit for workshops and seminars. So I think that um, we finally found the formula. So we're going to put it into practice this summer, this coming summer.